Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a four-year-old named Kylie and I also have a two-year-old named Mia. Now, it's an unfortunate reality that many of us did not have a very positive experience with mathematics when we were children, but we do realize how important it is to have a really solid understanding of math. And so naturally, we want to provide as many positive experiences as we can for our children to help give them that foundation that they need to start out strong. And what's so wonderful about the Montessori approach to learning things like mathematics is that it does provide a very concrete way of learning something that is actually very abstract, especially for very young children who are concrete thinkers. So we intentionally give them materials that they can use their hands to manipulate in some way to help give them a nice baseline so that once they are ready for that more abstract thinking, they have something in their own experience to connect it with. And it just, it makes so much more sense that way. So from one busy parent to another, today I'm gonna to be sharing with you a couple of different Montessori inspired activities that will help your child to gain experience with numbers and counting. Now it is totally normal and common for parents to want the best for their child. They want to make sure that they're giving them every opportunity possible because we always want things to be better for our children than they might've been for ourselves. And so naturally that leads a lot of parents to worry, especially for parents of very young children, to worry that they're going to be behind by the time they get to preschool if they don't get started early on things that are related to academic subjects like language and mathematics. And I just want to put out a little disclaimer, there is no need to rush your child into learning math or any other academic subject for that matter before they get to preschool. Just in case no one has ever told you before, I'm gonna go ahead and be that person for you. I'm gonna tell you what all the experts will tell you. It's okay to just let that stuff be until your child actually starts school. They're not going to be behind any of their peers. In fact, all the experts will tell you that play is the most important thing for your child, especially in these very early years between the ages of zero to three. So if your child is not even in preschool yet and you're worrying about these things, then I'm gonna let you off the hook right now and tell you that you don't need to worry. You're not going to harm your child's development by just forgetting all of these academic related activities until that time. It's totally fine. But with that said, it also isn't really going to hurt your child to gently introduce some of these activities if that is something that you choose to do. As long as you're not forcing your child to sit down and engage in these drill and kill flashcard sessions and things against their will where it's not fun for them and it's not fun for you, as long as you're not doing that, then it's totally fine for you to introduce these activities leave them out on your child's shelf for them to choose to work with independently if they want to. And you know, if you find that your child is really not all that interested in doing them, then that's okay too. Remember that every child develops on their own unique timeline. Some are ready for math earlier or later than others, and we just have to respect our child for where they are right now. So if that happens, then just put the activity away and just save it for a later time when perhaps it becomes more apparent to you that your child is actually interested in learning more about numbers and counting. And generally speaking, it should be pretty easy to tell when your child enters the sensitive period because all of a sudden you will just notice that your child is very focused on things that are related to numbers and counting and anything having to do with mathematics. So when that happens, then you can bring the activity back out and hopefully at that point, they'll be a little bit more ready for it. All right, so with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into the activities. Now, one of your child's earliest experiences with mathematical concepts is going to be something called one-to-one -one correspondence, which is just a fancy way of saying the ability to recognize that numbers actually represent very specific quantities. And this isn't just about rote counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. It's about counting real objects that your child can pick up and manipulate with their own two hands and about forming a real true understanding of what a number actually means. 
And there are literally a limitless number of ways that you can help your child to understand this concept. But I've gone ahead and picked out three very easy examples that might be able to give you a springboard for some ideas. So the first activity is to give your child a small basket of objects and a muffin tin to put them in. And the task is for your child to place one object into each of the muffin cups in the tin until the entire muffin tin is full. To make sure that your child is able to self-correct during this process in the event that they make a mistake, you wanna make sure that you have exactly the right number of objects in the basket to match the number of holes in the muffin tin. And in this example, you can see that my daughter is using bean bags, but you can use literally anything that you happen to have on hand for this activity. So another option might be some blocks or a set of balls or maybe even some items from nature. Another activity that's really great to introduce to a toddler who is actually experimenting with counting objects, and oftentimes you can hear them counting to themselves during their own play, is to give them a much smaller tray with a very limited number of objects. So here you can see my daughter is counting out pine cones one at a time. I did try to select three from our yard that were identical in size and shape for the most part so that there weren't really any other variables for her to focus on other than just counting them out and actually saying one, two, three as she placed each of them into their own compartments. And again, this activity can be done with any number of objects. It does not have to be pine cones. It can be anything that you have on hand. And one other example of an activity that can help to reinforce one-to-one -one correspondence is this cute little set of wooden peg number boards. So for this activity, the child is placing one peg into each of the corresponding holes on each of the individual number boards. And for a very young child, you are not going to introduce more than three at a time. And once they've mastered three, then you can move on to introducing the other numbers, but definitely start small. What's different about this activity though, is that the child can actually see the number symbol that is associated with the quantity of pegs that they're placing into the board. So even though there is still a major focus on the quantities themselves in this activity, because the child is just working with the pegs and the numbers are just kind of there, the fact remains that the numbers are there. And so this is kind of like a soft introduction to the abstract concept of a number symbol. And for that reason, I would recommend that this activity be introduced a little bit later on after your child has already had some experience with some of the other one-to-one -one correspondence activities first. And when you do introduce this activity to your child, make sure that you are emphasizing the counting part of it as you're doing the activity. So as you're putting each peg into each hole, you're actually counting it out loud for your child. Child, they can actually hear you say one as you're putting one in and then two, three, three pegs. And you can actually point to the number three on the board to help them make that association. All right, so the next couple of activities are geared towards slightly older children, maybe in the ballpark of like two and a half to three years old, when they really are starting to get a much better grasp on numbers and counting. And the first one is counting clip cards. So for this activity, your child has a series of cards with a different number of pictures of objects on each of them that they are tasked with counting out one by one. Then they have to find the correct number at the bottom of the card and then use a clothespin or sometimes they can just use like a little counter and place it on top. But in this example, we're using a clothespin to clip the correct number that they have counted out. And counting clip cards are incredibly easy to find online. I will put a link in the description box down below for you if you're interested in looking for a set to use with your child. And there are literally hundreds to choose from in a whole variety of different themes. So it makes it really easy to just find one that you know is interesting to your child, print it out, use it, and you've got a ready to go activity. Another really easy and printable activity are number puzzles. So for this one, there's generally a picture of some kind that has been divided up into a series of little strips that have all of the numbers in order from one to nine or one to 10 on the bottom. And your child's task is to put them back together in number order to make the completed picture. So this is a really great one for any child who is focused on learning how to count from one to 10 properly. And it gives them a very hands-on concrete way of doing so and actually being able to see those numbers visually as they're putting them in order as opposed to just verbally spitting them out in order because they memorize them and not really having an understanding of what they're saying. And just like the counting clip cards, number puzzles are super easy to find online and print out. So I will put a link in the description box down below to some of those also if you're interested in checking those out. The next activity is a really fun one for any child who loves a good challenge. 
It's a number scavenger hunt game. So for this activity, your child is given a set of cards that has the numbers one through 10 and then an associated number of household objects for each of the numbers. And their challenge is to go off and retrieve the correct number of those specific household objects based on what they see on the card. Now the set of cards that you're seeing my daughter use here is a set that I created myself for my girls to use, but I have also added it as a free printable in my Teachers Pay Teachers shop. So if you're interested in downloading it and trying it out with your little ones, then I will put a link to that in the description box down below. The next couple of activities all require the use of sandpaper numbers, which yes, you can purchase online, but honestly, they're so easy to DIY. The set that we use at home are ones that I created using index cards, where I just wrote all of the numbers in nice big black Sharpie marker, and then I went over it with a little bit of glitter glue and let it dry to help create that raised texture that your child can trace with their finger. If you don't have glitter glue available, you can also do it with regular glue and just a little bit of craft sand and let it dry. Again, anything to help create some texture. The first activity is called the bring me game. So for this one, you're just going to set out all of the sandpaper numbers on a table or some surface somewhere across the room from you and you're going to ask your child to bring you a specific number from the set. And so it actually requires gross motor movement because your child has to go all the way across the room to retrieve the number and to bring it back to you. And as boring as this might sound to you as an adult, children actually really like this activity. It's something about the movement and the challenge of being able to find the right one. It really gets them engaged, so don't underestimate it until you try it. And one common question that often comes up is, how do I respond if my child brings me the incorrect number? Like, how do I manage that? What do I say? And so I wanted to go ahead and put in a little clip, including the audio and everything, of when I was actually doing this activity with my daughter. Because my two-year-old, who doesn't have any understanding of the number symbols yet at all, she saw how much fun my older daughter was having, and so she wanted to have a turn too. And so when my older daughter was finished, I went ahead and just let her have her fun in bringing numbers to me. And I figured it was a really good opportunity to illustrate for you guys exactly how to handle that situation. If if your child does happen to bring you the wrong number. All right, Mia, can you bring me the number eight? Yeah. Number eight. Thank you for bringing me number four. Can you bring me number eight? Number eight. Thank you. So you can see that you're not telling them they were wrong, you're not pointing out their mistake, you're not doing anything to like crush their spirit and their engagement with the activity. You're just very casually naming the number that they did bring you to help reinforce that. And then you're either asking for the number again that you asked for originally, or you're just moving on to a different number entirely. Another game that you can play with the sandpaper numbers is shuffle and order. And it is exactly what it sounds like. You're just shuffling up all of the cards so that they're out of order. And your child's task is to put them in order again from one to 10 or one to 20 or whatever numbers your child is working with. Again, another great activity for any child who is really focused on learning that proper counting sequence. Another activity is number to picture matching, which is a combination of using your sandpaper numbers with a set of picture cards that correspond to each of those numbers. You absolutely can use any picture cards that you happen to have on hand that have different numbers of objects on them to go with your sandpaper numbers. You can even create them yourself if you're feeling crafty. But again, the set that you see my daughter using here is from that printable that I mentioned earlier that I created for my girls that is available as a free download for you guys. It not only includes the pictures you saw earlier that have the numbers and objects together, but it also includes separate pages that have just the numbers and just the pictures, which is what she's using for this activity. Again, I'll put a link in the description box down below if you're interested in downloading it for free and trying it out at home. And one other activity that you can try with your sandpaper numbers is called cards and counters. So for this one, your child is going to lay out all of the sandpaper numbers and they're going to use a small bowl or basket of ideally identical objects, but at least similar, if not identical 
and they're going to actually count them out one by one according to the quantity on the card. And it is preferable to have identical objects. This way your child is really focused on just counting out the quantities as opposed to focusing on the various different characteristics of the objects that they're using, which was actually something that my daughter was a little bit distracted by in doing this activity because there was slight variation in some of these buttons. But my personal motto is to just work with what you've got and buttons just so happen to be what we have on hand when we did this activity. You do need to make sure that you have the correct number of counters to equal the exact number of cards that you have. So if you are working with the numbers one through 10, then your child is going to need exactly 55 counters in their little bowl or basket in order to be able to self-correct. This way, if they have any counters left over at the end or if there aren't enough, then they'll be able to see that they've made a mistake somewhere and hopefully will be able to go back and fix their own mistake without any adult assistance. All right, so these last two activities activities are for slightly older children, usually around four to five years old, who are actually learning how to write out their numbers with a writing utensil. A great way to introduce this is through the use of a sand tray. So for this activity, your child is using a small shallow box filled with a very thin layer of craft sand. They'll start by choosing a sandpaper number to practice. They'll place it next to the box and then they'll use their finger to trace the number in the sand. If they make a mistake and they want to try again, all they have to do is shake the box slightly to even out the sand again, and they can repeat as many times as necessary. This activity is the next logical step after your child having had practice with the sandpaper numbers themselves, because they're making the exact movement that they did with the sandpaper number, but they're freeforming it on their own in the sand. And so they're kind of using that muscle memory that they've hopefully built up from using the sandpaper numbers to be able to write the number on their own. It's also a really stress-free way for a child to transition into this writing practice that they're doing because it's not permanent. It's not stuck on paper. All they have to do is jiggle the box and it's gone. And so they tend to have a little bit more fun with it and they feel a little bit more at ease. Not to mention kids love to play with sand. So it's a really engaging multi-sensory way to do so. And the final activity is a number tracing board where your child is using a small wooden stylus and practicing that proper pencil grip as they trace the shapes of all of the different numbers. It's a really easy way to help reinforce your child's muscle memory as they begin practicing writing pencil to paper when they are writing their numbers. And for a child who perhaps isn't quite ready for the stylus yet, they can even just use their fingertip and trace the shapes of the numbers just as they did with their sandpaper numbers. In addition, the back of this number board is helpful in introducing early geometrical concepts as a young child can use it to help recognize, learn, and trace basic shapes. And this number tracing board in particular is a brand new product that my husband's company, Montessori and Me, just launched this past week. It is already available for purchase on their website as well as on Amazon. So I will leave links to those in the description box down below in case you're interested in checking it out. All right, friends. So those are all of the Montessori inspired number and counting activities that I have to share with you for today's video. If you have any of your own ideas or suggestions, please be sure to share that with us in the comments down below. If you are interested in learning more about Montessori at home or positive discipline parenting, I also offer a couple of e-courses that walk you through it step-by-step. Step. So I'll be sure to leave a link to that as well in the description box down below in case you're interested in learning more about it. And just in case you are new to my channel, I also wanted to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series on this YouTube channel called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori at home with our children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.